So over the years, I've owned a lot of integrated amps and amps, maybe 70 plus. And at one point, I did own the Yamaha AS801, 501, 301. Well, it's one of those numbers. I know for sure the A01, I had it. You know, getting old, can't remember all the numbers, man. A few of you have mentioned to me, Thomas, man, until you try the AS1000 and up, you have not seen what Yamaha can really do. So I've always been curious about the Yamaha higher-end integrated amps. And thanks to Sean from Zero Fidelity, who recently introduced me to Yamaha, I got a chance to try the Yamaha AS2200. Now this integrated amp retails for about four grand US. And I was telling myself, okay, I have a few integrated amp with a MSRP in this area. For example, I have the Higo H200, the Paphos Logos, the Cayenne CS845A and the Macintosh 6700. Now the last two are a little bit more expensive. So for the Yamaha to impress me, it better be pretty good because you know, I have a lot of good integrated amps myself. So did the Yamaha AS2200 blew me away? In today's video, we're gonna talk about it. So let me quickly put up the specs here on screen. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the Yamaha product line, their higher end integrated amps are the AS1200, 2200, and the flagship 3200. Beyond that, yes, they do have this preamp and this high end power amp. The one I have is the AS2200. It's rated at 90 watts into eight ohms and 150 watts into four ohms. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the specs and I'm just gonna focus on a few things that caught my attention. Number one, it has MM and MC phono stage. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to try it. From what I read, it's apparently really, really good. So uh, the second thing is the fact that it has tone control. I'm a big fan of tone control because I have a lot of speakers. Sometimes I do need the help of tone control to adjust it to make it sound the best. The next thing that caught my attention is the fact that it has VU meters, level meters, whatever you call them. And I like the fact that it's a bit different than my Macintosh. I think that they're both beautiful, but the Yamaha seems to have a bit more character because the lights are shaped in a certain way. Here, I'll show, put a photo up here on screen and you can admire it for all you want. So I'm a big fan of the meters. I'm sure that everyone is. It's impossible that you don't like the meters. Now I wanna take a moment to talk about build quality. Now if you look at all my past videos, I rarely talk about build quality, but the Yamaha AS2200 is like A+. When I took it out of the box, I'm like, oh my goodness, this, this, this is premium quality. If you look at the volume knob, look at how smooth it turns. I'm gonna put this video here on screen here, admire it. Next, if you turn the, the switches, the feedback, the feel, it's, you have to touch it to know that this is not cheap. Yes, I wish that the knobs, the switches were made of metal instead of, I think, high quality plastic. But overall, like I have to say, I was really impressed with the build quality of this Yamaha. You look at the back, look at the binding post, the gold plated binding post, everything is gold plated. Even the ground for the phono stage is gold plated. Come on, how often do you see that? Anyway, my point is that the amp screams quality. And if you don't agree, I gotta smack you on the head, man. Now, for those of you who are wondering, Thomas, what's the difference between the AS1200 and AS2200? I see that there's an extra XLR input on the AS2200. I had the same question. So I asked Yamaha and this is their answer. Now I'm not gonna read the whole email. I'm just gonna put it up here on screen. So let's talk about how it sounds. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna summarize it in one sentence, a short sentence. Top end is not bright and yet detailed, okay? The mid range, there's a bump in the upper mid range and lower treble. Nuance, slightly forward. I hear a lot of information there. The bass is fast, it's tight, it's dynamic, and there's a lot of punch to it, and it's nuance. 
Finally, soundstage is the scale to the soundstage. So I just summarize how it sounds. You're probably going like WTF, that, that, that's the end of the video then? The reason why I'm spending zero time talking about how it sounds is because Ron from New Record Day and Sean from Zero Fidelity has already made a video on this Yamaha. So there's no point for me to repeat it. And I agree 99% of what they said. Well, I can't say 100%, else, you know, no one's gonna watch my video. Rather, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna spend a bit of time sharing my experience with this unit instead. Because when I listen to this Yamaha, there's two things that jump out that I think anybody who go audition it should pay attention to. Because when I said the mid-range has a slight bump, upper mid-range, lower treble, somewhere around there, I'm not kidding you. That part is either you love the unit or hate the unit, it's there. I spend a lot of time listening to vocals with this Yamaha AS2200. Man, the last few days I've only been listening to 80s music. These cheesy old Chinese YouTube videos because there's a lot of vocal. And what I notice is that I can hear, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit, the vocal cord vibration of the singer with this Yamaha AS2200. It really draws me in with the vocal. I know that because when I swap to my Macintosh MAC6700, the first thing I notice is that, man, it's like there's a veil in front of the mid-range for my Macintosh. I cannot hear the vocal cords of the singer. And it actually took me an hour to get used to it. Because I know that the, the Macintosh is, is very detailed, it's very clear. It's just that when I swap from the Yamaha, I notice that difference. And it, it is addictive. And that's why for some people, I can understand why they really like the Yamaha over a lot of the other integrated amps because for me, the voicing is a bit unique. And when I swapped to my Cayenne 845, because one day I told myself, you know, too much solid state, let me fire up my tube integrated amp and go enjoy some tube magic. And the first thing I noticed when I fire up the Cayenne 845, I'm like, darn, this, the way it handles the, the mid range is very similar to the Yamaha. I'm like, what the hell? Well, of course it's not the same, but the Yamaha is closer to my 845 than my Macintosh. Now, the second thing you should pay attention to is the bass. Uh, I heard that the bass with the 2200 is an improvement over the 2100. You see, when I test bass for my speakers, I use drums, okay? I, I, one of the tests I do is the speed of the drum. And one of the CD I use is uh, Wonder Woman. So I'm gonna play a track here just to give you an idea what I use to test the speed. For me, when I listen to this track, it should not be muddy. Everything should be very clearly defined dum 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 right each note is clear so there's no overlapping in the notes and it doesn't feel slow well okay it doesn't feel muddy it's, it's there's a lot of definition to it and you might think that a lot of the integrated amps can do it it actually cannot a good example is when i test the acoustic energy 509 you see i was testing the speed on that speaker and one of the first amp that i hooked it up to was my macintosh 7300 now this is a vintage Macintosh amp, 300 watts. And for me, it failed the test. So when I swapped to the Yamaha, that's where I go, okay, this passed the test. Because if the Yamaha fails, then I move up to a higher end amp or integrated amp. But I stopped at the Yamaha because for me, it passed the test. So let me tell you the experience of my friends who have got a chance to try this unit at their place. So I got my friend who's, whom I'll call Mr. Kanta because he used to own a pair of Kanta. And then my other friend, Mr. Quad, because he currently owns a pair of Quad. Now, they told me that they hear distortion when they were using this unit. And I'm like, what? I don't hear distortion at my place. Maybe we've got a lemon, so bring it back. Once I brought it home, I noticed there's a switch at the back. Something about XLR something. Now, I know they use XLR. You see, I use RCA and I didn't hear that at my place. So I read the manual. 
And then I go like, darn these audio files, man. Don't they ever read the manual? It's written in the manual. If you hear distortion, there's the switch for that. Oh gosh. Okay, so sorry guys, there is no story to tell with my friends for this video because their test is completely not valid. They should have read the manual and figure out there's that switch there. All right, so let's move on to a few things that you should be aware of if you're buying this unit. The first, as I mentioned, is the mid-range bump. For some people, they love it, but for some other people, it might be a little bit too, quote-unquote, aggressive, a bit too forward, too pronounced. And I noticed that because it is, it, it, it really takes center stage, I'm having more difficulty listening, hearing details relative to my Macintosh. Now, I'm not saying that it's not detailed. It is absolutely, there's a lot of detail with this Yamaha. It's just that relative to my Macintosh, there is less. And for some people who love that V-curve, you know, boost the top, boost the base, this might sound a little bit uh, less exciting. So that's one thing you should be aware of. And because of that mid-range bump, I noticed also that even with my Focal uh, bookshelf speaker, the 1008, I have a harder time drawing out people in the soundstage relative to my Macintosh. I'm not saying that I cannot. I'm just saying relatively speaking. The second thing you should be aware of is you know what? I'll, I'll start like this. So recently I posted a sound demo on my community page and I asked everybody if you can hear the difference between A, system A and system B. There's only one thing that changed. And the thing that changed was break it. I recorded the sound, first sound clip when I got, <laughs> took the Yamaha out of the box. At the time, the Acoustic Energy 509 speaker had about 15 hours on it. So system B is after about, I think, 40 to 60 hours later. It's around there, okay? And about 400 people participate in the survey, and 70% of them said they can hear a significant difference. Now, it's not far-fetched to say if they had the original file, not the YouTube compressed file, or if they're here actually in my room, or having two rooms, right? One will break in and one will break in, and they go back and forth you'll probably get about 80-85% of the people able to hear a significant difference. And th th I mean, the, the sound clip was recorded on two different days. I even reversed the, uh, the channel, I think. That's what some, what some people told me. Some people say the left side seems a bit louder with the second recording because it's not center, right? The mic, different day of recording. But the point is that despite all that, 70% of the people were able to tell a difference. But what was most significant though? okay is that for all the people who can hear the difference a difference 90 percent and more prefer the recording after break-in now that is statistically significant 400 people now for those of you who like it before break-in that's also fine because one thing i noticed over the years trying a lot of gear sometimes i actually prefer it before break-in <laughs> For example, the PMC DB1, I actually liked it better before breaking, although objectively speaking, I know that after breaking, it does sound better because I like the sharpness of the tweeter before breaking. So that's why even if you voted prefer before breaking, that's fine too, because it's really a question of taste. After that, that recording was about 40 to 60 hours. I keep breaking it in and it's crazy, man. I would just leave it run overnight up to the point where it, <laughs> there was twice I came down like what the hell there's no more sound did I get a lemon or something did it stop working the needles are still moving or something but I don't hear any sound I had to reboot the integrated amp and then I get sound again so after the second time I email Yamaha I say dude uh, what the hell is like is there some kind of auto shutdown and they say yeah there's a switch at the back I bet Yamaha is saying damn those audio files man don't they ever read the manual <sighs> When my wife is not home, I would blast the system so loud that I can hear it on the third floor. This is the basement here. I noticed that by 40, 60 hours, there's a significant change and another change around the 80 to 100 hours. When I first got it, the reason why I didn't want to review it is because the mid-range bump there was aggressive. I had to turn down the treble to listen to this Yamaha unit as I keep breaking it in. I noticed by the time I hit 100 hours at low listening volume, I actually start turning the treble up a little bit. 
Oh, that reminds me with the Yamaha. With this amp, uh, I have to turn it to a certain volume for me to really enjoy it. So low listening volume, unless you're really somebody who just want to listen to vocal at low, low volume, um, you'll have to play with the tone control. So as of last night, when I listened to it, uh, the aggressiveness that, that I talk about is, is gone. So in the beginning when I got it, I thought that this Yamaha is good to pair with speakers that are a bit darker, not too bright, no vocals, but uh, that's not true. After breaking, one of my favorite speakers to pair it with is actually my Focal 1008. So Yamaha, expect my electric bill after this review. Now let's wrap it up at this point. Now the reason why I've considered getting this unit for myself is simply because of its unique voicing. Now at the same time, I do recognize the fact that because of its voicing, it's not necessary for everyone. Usually when people email me and ask me for advice, I tend to suggest either Hegel or Macintosh because I, I consider those the safe option. Now, on the other hand, if you're somebody that I actually took the time to really understand your musical taste or somebody who pays me real money for real advice, not that it's happened yet, then I would say the Yamaha AS2200 should be your, on your addition list. Now, I think that this Yamaha is one of those amps that for some people, they will fall in love with. I always say, right, there's no such thing as the best speaker, best amp, best DAC. There's the right DAC for you out there, the right amp and the right integrated amp. And in this case, it shows. Look at the comment section of all those YouTube videos. Some of them, man, they, they worship this integrated amp. And they love it so much that it should tell you that there is a group of people out there that this kind of voicing is really for them. And for somebody who have tried a lot, a lot of integrated amp, I can understand it. Because I got moved by the music when I listened to this integrated amp. Now, the question for me is, do I buy this unit or do I try to get my hands on the AS3200? Now, my friend had the AS3000 before and it sounded pretty good. Decisions, decisions. Time to buy a lottery ticket. All right, see you guys next time. Ah, decisions, decisions. <laughs>